when they told me it was just yeah it was I just felt like my my world just um you know just flipped over I just grabbed my keys just went to the nearest park and then just had a little cry and then I uh, told my wife they say time is money nah time is time like time is like precious like you know you can always make money but time is the most precious thing this episode of a beacon of hope is proudly brought to you by campfire studios to find out more visit campfirestudios.co.nz two three four A Beacon of Hope is a weekly podcast that shines a light on the human spirit and explores the power of hope in our lives. Join me, Will Fleming, as I talk to people from all walks of life about where they find hope and how they use it to navigate life's challenges. Be good. Be safe. And be happy. In this episode of A Beacon of Hope, I am honoured to chat with James Vicinia, diagnosed with stage 4 gastric cancer. James is a husband and father who is sharing his personal journey in the hope that other men will be brave enough to get a checkup with their doctor. James also highlights the importance of having a positive outlook in life and how the support of his family has been a huge part of his fight with cancer. Just a note that there are some electronic random feedback things in this episode, so if you hear a weird buzz, I'm sorry about that. I hope that you can still enjoy this episode. Thank you to James for joining me on the podcast, and thank you to Liz, my cousin, who put me in touch with James. That's her brother-in-law. Okay, let's get into this podcast. James Vicinia is our beacon of hope. Yeah, yeah, no, life was quite good. 2018 was when I met my wife. 2020 is when I got married. And then, you know, had um, my daughter in 2021. So, yeah, no, things were like, you know, things were quite good. And then the birth of my son in uh, the end of uh, 2022. So that was December, uh, just December, just the past December. And then the Jan, Jan is when I found out um, I had a uh, gastro cancer. I've been having issues with um, my stomach in the past, and I thought it was, I never thought anything of it. Mm. It felt like um, someone was like squeezing my, um, you know, just within my stomach, and um, you know, it just comes and goes. Um, and it wasn't until I um, uh, changed doctors and, uh, or, um, uh, you know, started checking what she did. They put the camera in me, and um, yeah. As the as the lady when the lady put the camera inside my um, my mouth, um, she just like I knew or something bad. She just said, "Oh no, nah, it's not looking too good." Um, and that was a Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday um, was when I got told uh, I got told on the on the phone, which I wasn't too happy about it because um, you know at least they should have like pricked me to be with someone, but they called me at work and when they told me it was just. Yeah, it was. I just felt like my my world just um, you know, just flipped over. I just grabbed my keys, just went to the nearest park, and then just had a little cry, and then I uh, told my wife. From then on, yeah, I just learned to accept it, and going forward, it's just um, you know, taking a day at a time with the love and support of my family. It's been awesome, and we also, I also like um, you know, me and my wife both uh, to our church and like our faith, which helped, which helped me. Um, get through this. So, uh, so far, well, like it's 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 going good so far. So, um, yeah, it was tough at the start, but uh, right now, um, I guess I'm more content and um, you know, just taking the day at a time. You know, I think what's interesting is um, and and brave is I think many people don't talk about this kind of stuff when it happens, and the fact that you can share with us that you know the. Well, first of all, that they didn't prep you properly. They just kind of hit you. And you would think that people who earn that amount of money and have these titles as doctors with, you know, they're supposed to do no harm, right? And uh, the fact that they just kind of, you know, I'm trying to think of a better word than threw you under the bus and, and you were at work. And so do you remember kind of 
is that moment just locked in your brain now when they just called you and you had to kind of process that information? Yes, it was it was something that um just lingering on my mind. But um right now with the good mindset that I have, I just you know, I just learned to just move on. Um, you know, it, it would have been nice if um, you know, if they said, you know, like, hey, would you like to come in and then we'll talk more or do you have a person with you? And then, you know, that would have been I, I would have accepted, it, but just the fact that um, you know, just Whenever you whenever a doctor says to you any sort of cancer, you're you just you, you're you're mentally break down. It just feels like your world's coming down. Like as soon as you hear the cancer, um, so yeah, nah, that 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 blew uh that that surprised me. Yeah. And at the same time, I wasn't happy with um you know, like at least you know prep me or like just say you know have someone there to be my support. And was your wife your first call once you once you'd had yeah. that moment in the and what was that conversation? I mean, well, there must have been a million things in your mind making that call. Uh, my wife was being strong, and um, yeah, she was just telling me, you know, we'll get through this. Um, I called her; she was um, visiting her parents, so she was in the room just changing my um, my son. She must have, um, you know, after changing my son, she went into the front, and her sisters were there. Um, her sisters knew, like, like you know, something's something's wrong. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, nah, it was yeah, it was tough um at that time. Um, you know, um I immediately thought about, you know, I just my kids, I thought about my kids. Like, man, I just started my family and you know, this is it's hit me and um I was just worried about like what's gonna happen if I'm not there. Like who's gonna mm-hmm. support kids in my 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 family. So uh yeah, yeah, it was it was it was tough at the time. I guess the thing I want to ask you, bro, is like, how have you remained hopeful? You know, this is the topic of this podcast is hope seems to be something that most people are like, oh, yeah, I'm optimistic until that really heavy stuff happens, you know? And then it's like, I, I'm trying to get a sense, like, what things did you lean into more? You know, you mentioned kind of church and stuff like that. And, and, and I'm also trying to find, you know, what are the things that you've found helpful for those other people who might not get a phone call and they're going to suffer the same? They've already got the bad news and they're double taking a double hit, you know? So, like, uh, I guess what are the things that have been really useful for you as you have gone through this, you know, up and down ride? It's just having a good support um, crew. So, yeah, the first two weeks, um, I, I, I just, I shared my tears with my wife. You know, I I, I shared my vulnerable side, especially for us guys. You know, we we, we try to be prideful, strong, yeah. uh, and you you have to be vulnerable, and um, you have to let your partner or like someone close know what you're going through. Um, so yeah, well, I was just you know, yeah, that those first two weeks was just tears, and uh, you know, it was tough, but then you know, like as those two weeks went by. Um, I just learned to accept it. I guess anything in life, um, you know, good or bad, ugly, whatever, you just got to learn to accept it and just move on. And I guess if you don't accept any like um, anything in life, like good or bad, like I said before, um, you're not going to move on. You probably see on my social media. I wanted to share because I know there's 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 a, there's a few people out there that like they don't want to share their news or they, they don't want to share what they're going through. But for me, it's just to like um, to give a sense of hope for those that are going through what I'm going through. Yeah. Um, you know, it's good to like good to share because then the, uh, you, you inspire the other ones that are going through what we're going through. Um, it gives them hope. Um, you know, life can be tough, but you, know, you always find something positive or something that you can lead to to be happy. So yeah, so you just focused on. Um, because at first I didn't want to do the chemo. Like in my, my I, I didn't want to do chemo. I was like, man, my hair's gonna come off. I'm gonna you know, lose weight, whatever. But um, you know, as soon as I looked at my kids, um, and then my wife gave me a good talk. Yeah, I just said, no, nah, I'll, I'll do it. I did it with um with a good mindset. I guess those that are going through um, you know, whatever if they're going through chemo or treatment, if you just do it with not a good mindset, then I don't know how I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I just went with a mindset that like no, no, I'll be fine. 
you know, I've got all this love and support from my family and friends, and I'm doing it for my kids. So yeah, so far it's going good. So I've got four more, four more to go until I'm done for uh, the first cycle round. Or yeah, you know, ever since ever since I posted up um my my diagnosis or my um I've been having people messaging me, and um, I said the best thing is it's just to get checked get checked no matter how healthy you feel or you know just like especially for us guys you know mm. we only we only just we only get checked when we like you know when the pain gets um you know stronger or like if it you know worsens mm. but like it's always good to just get a full body check and from there if they do find something then you know they, they can um you know sort it out Instead of waiting for it to develop or to spread, and then it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. So, yeah, I'll be having a few people messaging in. I just said, look, best thing to do, just do your check. And if there's something that's um, bothering you, you know, you gotta look at your, you know, you gotta look at your family, and you know, you got people that care for you or depend on you. That you know, you should you should just go forward. So, did it surprise you that you know those people around you really? I, I think you would have known they will hold you up, but has it been really cool to know that you know when it all came down to it, that's that's kind of built in us, right? That some community will wrap around you, that your family will wrap around you, because um, you would think, and we're told that it will be the doctors that do that, but it hasn't been that. Hey, eh? it's been yeah. your loved ones who, you know, because I guess one of the concerns I might have as a man is. You know, um, I like to be the strong one, but you had to really trust that your wife could handle that, and sounds like she has. Yeah, she's been a rock um, behind my, um, you know, recovery or treatment. And for us guys, like I, I even told some of my boys, like man, my boys were like, "How do you do it?" And I was like, um, "You just gotta, you gotta uh, let your partner or whoever that's close to you know your like your true feelings." Because mm. for us guys. We we need to get rid of this pride thing, you know. Like I understand what guys will be like, nah, nah, like you know, you're strong, or they probably got it from like you know our fathers. You know, our fathers, like, you know, they always like you know, keep it to themselves. And but I always like I always tell them, you know, we have to change the way we um you know, project ourselves. We've got to, yeah, you know, we can be we can be like you know strong, but there's got to be a time where we're gonna be vulnerable. But just be vulnerable as I I notice is um you know you let. You you let your partner or or someone that you trust what you're going through and you know and, and it's good because you can get a feedback from them mm-hmm. and and it feels like a, a burden that just you know just slowly falls falls up, falls away from your shoulder and nice and then that's what that's what I feel like you know like because I could have just kept it to myself like I could have just kept it to myself and my wife like what are you feeling like, nah I'm all good I'm all good. No, 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 I'm, I'm safe. Like, mm. But really, when she walks away, you feel like you know, you have pain, and because you're not opening and being vulnerable. So that's one thing that I've, I've, I've learned to, uh, to share with others. You know, be vulnerable, but make sure you trust them. Just let, let, let that, that love, that person that you love the most, or that your partner, or you know, say your mom, or like you know, sibling. You know, sibling. Just let them know what you're going through because that way you can get the support and the help that you need. Instead of just being too prideful or be strong, when you know, but really you're just yeah, yeah. And and James, do you think that when we um, be vulnerable, when we release that control that we think we have, do you think that helps the kind of recovery? You know, because I guess if you're trying to hold it all in and you know act like nothing's wrong, your body must be more stressed, eh? And it is already quite stressed with trying to work out what's happening with the cancer and whatnot. I guess what I'm trying to say, bro, is like sometimes guys feel like, oh, no, nah, I don't need to show my emotions. That's not real. But if you look at mental health, if you look at what you're going through, yeah. I get the real sense from you. You have that vulnerability is more than just us saying it's about feelings. It yeah. must play a part, eh? Yeah. And it does. And it's like, um, you know, like when you hold a baby and the baby can feel your energy. What's the baby gonna do? Just cry when you're calm. Like I've noticed with my son, when when you're calm and stuff, like the baby, you know, can feed from your energy, and and and, and that's what I mean. Like 
you just kind of like your vulnerability is like you're letting out your, you know, you're just letting out all your frustration, your anger, your whatever you're going through. And then it's just like once you, once you share it, like you just feel like, you know, oh man, I feel good because I've, I've shared, you know, I've shared all that. Um, hurt. you just didn't realize why you had in you after you shared it. And, and then after that, this one of the steps to get better. And then, so now your mind's clear, your body feels less stress. And then now it's like, what's the steps to, um, to being better? That, that's, 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 that's the whole process that I went through. Like, um, you know, as soon as I shared with my wife, I felt like a whole, um, just a whole burden or whatever, just, you know, and now it's like, what are the steps? And, um, so far I've, I've done the steps that the doctors have given me and I've kind of added my own, uh, my own steps, recovery process. And, um, yeah, no, it's so far, it's, uh, I find that that's just my way of getting through this. Um, mm. this I hope it's not too much of a personal question, but I guess one of the things I've been wanting to ask is, um, What's every day like, you know, like, I guess there's nothing guaranteed, you know, and you go into the day with a positive, hopeful attitude. But for a lot of people, they feel like they have way more control until maybe you're in a situation like yours where you're hoping for a positive outcome. We all are, but you can't guarantee anything. What is it like living like that? Because I guess for most of your life, you lived in an idea that, you know, tomorrow comes. And we're going to go to work or do our stuff, but it must be every day means a lot. For me, I just cherish every moment that I have. Um, I try not to think too much about what's going to happen, you know, what's coming um, tomorrow or next week. Just go day to day. But you know, whatever whatever you do, just make the most of it. Um, mm. You know, like I'm just trying to make the most of it. I was pretty good at like <laughs> we had the skydive on Friday. Um you know, we had everything, everyone donated and stuff, but I got told that I didn't make the weight requirement, which my wife was a bit done, but I, I pushed her to, to go. I go, no, it's cool for, for everyone yeah. um, that donated and stuff. And, uh, you yeah, know, so she jumped on my behalf. I'm still gutted that I didn't jump, but it's just like, you know, whatever you do, like, just, just, just enjoy, like, just embrace it. Uh, even if you're going out for coffee and stuff, you know, like just just make the most of it. Like, mm. and that's life, you know. Life can be so so good, and then something something like this can happen, and um, we all tend to, um, you know, be negative or just be down. But now nah, I'm just, I, I never think too much about what's what's coming my way. I just think about the present. Are you different to before your diagnosis? Do you think there's things that you stressed about that you wish you hadn't? And I guess what's your message for those people who, you know, because I kind of feel like how do we see through your eyes so we all can get a lesson to be like, today's a great day. Go and make it the best. Even for me, you know, like it's not like I sit here thinking that I've got all my stuff on lockdown. You know, I'd like to be more patient, but it seems to be something in us where, you know, you have that unique window which allows you to put the correct things in order. Does that make sense? Before my diagnosis, if I had to talk to myself, I would have just told myself, hey, man, you need to calm down. Like, I was more thinking about working, um, just providing for my family. Um, yeah, I was more like, honestly, just thinking about work too much. Um, but this time that I've been, um, you know, been away from work is that, um, you know, you've got to make the most of, um, you know, time, time is more precious. You know, we could, you know, we, we could be thinking about our business, or whatever, but then we don't have the time that we have with our loved ones. That's, 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 you know, I'm just, you know, so blessed to, um, to get that time. You know, for those that are going through, um, you know, like your question that you asked, um, mm. just, Make 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 the most of the time. Don't let work or outside, you know, what outside thing consume your life. Because yeah, yeah, we have to like in a way we have to work to to provide. But sometimes, just take a day off, spend time with your wife, your family, go have a coffee, or just you know, go you know, do something. We work so hard that we come home, and then we just like it's the same thing: eat, rest, and then back to work. 
And but you know, that time's gone. Yeah, I've got asked this from a few of my friends and stuff, and I'm like, man, like, yeah, work is important, but time time that you have with your loved ones is the most important. Uh you know, make the most of it. He would just pop in to go see them. Um, you know, work is always gonna be there, but you know, you just gotta like here and there, take some time off. And that's more of just um resetting your 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 mind, um, your body. And then you go back to work and then you'll be like, Man, I'm I'm so glad I've, I've took that time off. So mm-hmm. yeah, I just I just said, yeah, just make the most of time. They say time is money. Nah, time is time, like time is like precious. Like you know, you can always make money, but time is the most precious thing. Yeah. I think that's part of why I wanted to chat with you because I think people agree. It's just we don't take it seriously. We trade in that time for other things, and I guess we're both here today to, you know, say, yeah, man, that's important, and it's like you said, time is time, and um, can always earn money. But for some reason, we don't think that's true. And for you to, you know, come and talk about this, I think will remind a lot of us that you, we've got to get busy living. So, um, a little bit about the the jump. So the idea was to raise money and that you were going to jump out of a plane. Is that the kind of general idea? Yeah, so all the, so all the, all the funds and all the um, donations go to our Cancer Society. So yeah, all the funds. Are, but yeah, like just jumping. Uh, I, I wanted to, uh, my wife was the one that sorted it out. Uh, she just, it was funny how she told me we were just going. She said, oh, we're done up Asian. <laughs> And I was like, what? I was like, so what are we doing? I was like, we're going to be jumping off the plane. And like, man, I was so looking forward to it. Um, I was so gutted at the same time when I got told that, um, you yeah, know, I was over the, the way requirement. Um, but then again, I was just, I, I was so proud of my wife. Like my wife was just telling me that, you know, it was, it was scary, but she, she, she had a reason to, to do it and she did it for me. And yeah, I'm just so proud of her. And, yeah, it was just more of like stepping out of your comfort zone. Like I know what I'm, you know, what I'm going through, or you know, others are going through like a lot tougher than me, or you know, but it's it's just pretty much just showing, like showing people, man, like you know, whatever we got going on in our life, just make the most of it. Like you know, not very nice because you know, lots of us Pacific, we 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 weigh a lot, <laughs> you know, yeah, we got yeah. big big muscles and whatnot. Um, maybe something we can do is uh, a bungee because I know when I went to bungee, they were like, "Oh, we better put two bungees on me," so they could put yeah. two bungees on you. We should we should organize that. But you know, without sounding too mean to our friends, uh, that's the doctors let you down, the jump thing let you down, and the only ones who have come through is like family and friends. And I think that's a lesson too that. Yeah. It's cool to do all these things for others, but it's actually when it counts, it's the people who love you that will, they will be your true um, support system. And, and, but you got to do your part too, I guess is what I'm hearing from you, which is be brave to go get checked, you know, be okay saying, I don't feel like I've been checked properly. And, and to that, and then to be brave when you, and if you do get bad news to, to not suck it up, eh? To go and tell those people, yeah, because that could have gone a lot different for you. You might have felt the instinct to just do what men before us had done, don't say anything, um, and then there's no options there, right? And that's how, like, I see all my dad. My dad was, you know, my mum was concerned and like, she's like, no, I'm all right, and, you know. Um, so I want to, like, for me, I want to change, change that. Um, that mindset and um you know just yeah we have to like yeah we've got to do it not for us but like these people that depend on us um that like you know especially our kids um our wife you know our families um you know that's the best thing you can do is just you know get checked and um no matter how like well you are get checked because something so small, they can detect it straight away, and then they can sort it out straight away. Whereas, if that you know, spreads, like I was saying earlier, um, you know, the response I've been getting, man, I'm like one time I um I was probably like she uh 
yeah, she went to school with my wife and she she came up to me. She goes, man, like, thank you for sharing your, your video. Like, I made my husband go get checked, not only my husband, but myself as well. You know, it's good news that he's okay, but, like, we're still going to yeah. keep doing the checks. And, um, and I just said, oh, oh that, that's, um, I'm happy I could, you know, like, you know, spread some awareness. So just two things before we kind of wrap up and just want to say thanks again, bro, for doing this. You know, we live in a world now where lots of social media stuff goes on, but I don't think people have true chats. <laughs> and that's why I'm doing this, because I think there's stories that need to be told. And it might just be little things like reminder that it is okay to be vulnerable. And I think everyone agrees, but we don't take it serious, you know, but in this case, it has helped you. Um, because you're dealing with, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulder and thinking about how, you know, family and all of these things. Um, I don't know why we're so hesitant to get checked, maybe because we're scared of bad news. Yeah. But yeah, what would your kind of final message be just to people who who are listening to this and thinking, oh, no, nah, I'll be all right? I think, especially for us Pacific Islanders and Maldives are, I think, well, this is just my my opinion. I think what to our body is sacred, and you know, you don't like. Um, I've seen it with like you know my parents when they go get checked, they like they don't want the doctors to touch them, like because the body's so sacred. Mm. And you know, it's a, you know, that's 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 just how I I view it. And so when something happens to them, like they don't want to get checked because they don't want anyone touching you know their bodies and stuff. And, yeah. like, uh, which I understand, um, you know. I, I guess for our elders, they um, they only like when it comes to their situation, they think about like themselves, but they don't think about like what affects their kids and grandkids. Right. Um, and that's 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 just the like you know we gotta like we gotta break away from like what our you know elders have done, and we gotta like you know if if it's really sacred, like if there's something like. I don't know, gastro or like whatever, like get it checked. Um, it just, you know, you, you, you got to get it checked because um, once you get checked, you know, that, that can help like stop the spreading of whatever that's going inside your body. And that's, that's just how I see it. You know, like when every time I like, when I talk to family and friends and like, I don't want anyone touching me. I don't want. Well, I don't want the doctor to. Uh, <laughs> but that's and it, it, as time went by, like I, it just like I was talking to my wife. And I was like, you know what? I think it's not the chicks. It's just that no one wants to like. They don't want the doctors to touch their bodies. Uh, you know, like they might be embarrassed. Yeah. Or shame. You know, like, and then when it gets worse. And then the doctors will be like, oh, you know, there's nothing much we can do about it. We just got to have to, you know, and then, yeah, you know, that's just. That's good advice. I mean, I've talked to other people who have said, like, even 15-minute consult is not long enough. You yeah, know, we yeah. want to we want to introduce properly and connect with that person who's supposed to have that doctor skill set. And if we don't feel comfortable, we won't tell the truth, you know, yeah. and. So there's all those things that our health system needs to match to our cultures, and yeah, it's uh, it's good advice, bro. So so knowing that, I guess you just have to say to yourself that we probably are like that, you know, we're a bit private with our own bodies, but but if you're thinking about your kids and your grandkids, that it's okay to be brave about, you know, that person may have to be close to you or touch you to get a good, you know, um, yeah. But I hear you, eh? Because, yeah, that's it. It's not the it's not the medical stuff. It's just like, why do you have to? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, um, you know, why, why are you touching me in a certain way? But that's, the doctors are just doing their job, but you know, they're just, yeah. I just think that they're yeah, like either embarrassed or just shy or just they want anyone touching, mm. touching anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And finally, uh, I've asked a few people to do this on this podcast. Where, you know, I just regardless what happens, you know, obviously I hope the best for your journey, as I hope the best for all of our journeys that we live, you know, happy and 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 long. Um, but I wanted to ask if you could just say a quick message to your wife or your kids, so that it's recorded. 
you know, because one thing I think our modern people don't do is we don't write our stories like we used to. We don't have lots of examples. You know, in the past, there was always paintings and and poems, and um, we do pass on the old stuff, but not as much because we live in the Western world. But I thought, man, while we've got the gear recording, you know, can you just spend a couple minutes talking to your wife and your kids and your family and just tell them how much you love them, you know? To my wife and to my kids, um, you know, you guys are the reason why um, that I'm, you know, doing well in this treatment. Um, you know, my wife, she's just the rock. Um, she's been there up and down my ups and downs through the treatment. Um, she supported me. She's always there at my um, my my doctor's appointments. I um, just want to say I love you. Um, you've been the best thing that's happened to me. Um, and to my kids, um, dad loves you. Um, no matter what happens to dad, dad will always, you know, dad will always be there for you. Um, if it's physical or spirit, that will always be there for you. Um, see my family. Um, I love you guys. Thank you for supporting me and my little family. Um, getting through this tough time. Um, I'm just in the way. It's it's a blessing that this happened to me because I think my life that I was living before, it was I was trying to live for a fast life, and now this is like kind of like. Open my eyes and seeing life in a different perspective. Um, you know, I'm I'm just grateful to be where I'm at right now. Um, I feel content um, and just getting closer to my faith as well. It's 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 making this process um a lot easier for me. Um, so to my wife and kids, I love you very much. My family, um, you guys know you guys know. Um, um, I love you guys. I appreciate everything that you guys done for me. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy, and I can't wait to um, you know do stuff with you guys. Um, yeah, yeah, bro. I mean, it feels weird, eh? Because that's not, and I say it to every guest, I don't want that to be read as if it's a goodbye because it's not. You know, you're in this and. You know, it's the battle, and you're up for that. But I just think we've got to we've got to also be brave enough to capture that. And when I do that with people, I think it makes them think far. Maybe we should do more recordings, you know, some little daily stuff, because none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. And I think that's the message is that we all think we do. And you get a unique window to share with us about, like, the realities of life and how important it is. So... I guess I um, just want to say thanks to Kent James and and um, maybe if you're okay, you know, let's keep in touch. I want to know if, you know, where you, if it's a good or bad, like your family, we wrap around you and we can do the same on the podcast, you know, because there are lessons for people um, to live life, the gift that we've got. And uh, yeah, man, I don't know. I get a strong feeling we need to get you on that bungee. If they're not going to let you on the plane, then uh, uh, we're going to push you off the bungee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that's what I want to do. Yeah, I want to do bungee. Cause I, like, I had messages like, um, so I seen the uh, put it on my story, and then they're like, "So what's next?" <laughs> I'm like, oh, bungee jump now because I'm just yeah gutted that I couldn't you know get to jump off the plane. But yeah, that's probably next in the cards. But yeah, now like like well, what you said, like um. I just want to thank you for um, giving me the opportunity to be part of your podcast. Um, thank you um, for you know the chats and stuff. Um, you know, I feel like it's it's the more I share with um, with people, the more it gives me hope and and you know it just yeah I really enjoyed our chat today. Uh, hope hopefully you know the things I've said can inspire those that are going through um, similar to what I'm going through. Uh, yeah, I would love to ever catch up with you yep. and just let you know what like the updates and stuff. Um, so I've had my I had my halfway through. Um, so this is this will be my I think my eighth or ninth cycle. Uh, but on my sixth cycle, um, now things are looking good. My tumors have have come down. Before my last cycle, I'm gonna have my CT scan and they're gonna compare from halfway to the end. So 
yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll like to, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to be part of your podcast. And Awesome. You know, Thank you again, Bo. And um, it's nice to chat with you and I look forward to more chats. And, um, yeah, keep being hopeful as we all are for you and and strong and, um, and yeah, live life and we'll catch up soon. Yeah, no, cheers, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Much love and I uh, hope to, um, yeah, keep all, we'll, we'll keep in contact. Absolutely. This episode of A Beacon of Hope is proudly brought to you by Campfire Studios. Campfire Studios is an impact-led organisation amplifying the voices of Māori and Pacifica communities via podcasting and video content. To find out more, visit campfirestudios.co.nz. Thank you for tuning in to this Frequency of Hope in our podcast today. If you found value from this episode and want to hear more, I would love it if you could follow, subscribe and rate our show. By doing so, you will increase the frequency of the Beacon of Hope. So if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or any other platform, please take a moment to hit the follow or subscribe button and leave a rating and review. I truly appreciate your support and feedback and it helps us make our podcast even better. Thank you. Be good. Be safe. And be happy. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like that song, doesn't it? Be happy. All right, Mama, we stop there, eh? Yeah, okay. okay. All right.